Uh-oh, plug it in. Click, click. It's beeping. See the picture of the baby? Okay. Neural development, uh, Stephen eloquently discussed the process of sensory integration and the importance of making sure as a child, it's so important for those children, our children, and it was important for you. Everybody went through the process of going from like this in the womb to eventually at four years old. The ability to do a jumping jack, the ability to raise your arms above your head without looking like a monkey. You know that's uniquely human? To be able to put your arms above your head without doing this? Humans can have their scapula actually go down. Monkeys have to do this. You, you see what I'm saying? So, why not keep that human part Right? Uh-oh, start windows normally. Yes, okay. Uh, why not stay uniquely human? But that's what happens to us as we encounter the perception, I'll call it the perception of stress, because really it's all about the way we integrate it and the way we perceive it. But the more things that throw us off balance, the more we go into our predictive pattern of stress and decay, right? Nobody gets stressed and goes, wow, this is the stressed out, I'm as stressed as I've ever been. <laughs> now, what do they do? What do you do? What, everybody just put on your stress position for me. What's the first thing? There you go. I see the shoulders. Yep. Up they go, right? Shoulders go up. What do the jaws do? Clench. What do your, if, if you'll notice sometimes, if, you, if you're not thinking about it, I find myself doing this sometimes. Um, if I'm sitting, I'll notice that my, my knees are approximating each other, the, and I'll say, just relax. Oh. And then they fall apart again. It's a very predictable pattern of muscle imbalances that occur when any kind of stress comes into your life. And what's so cool about this is we can look for this, and I think this thing might just be dead. I am not kidding. I got a blue death screen a second ago. <laughs> Actually, it's, great. it's a great opportunity to just let it flow through, right? Um, but really, that's what the whole game of life as a human is about as far as in our bodies, is to maintain our uprightness against gravity or to be able to stay in sync with gravity so gravity doesn't get us and drag us forward. That's what happens, isn't it? As soon as we think about it, as soon as we recommended, let's do that. And this is way different. All right. Recommended. <laughs> Whenever we even drop a centimeter in front of the gravity line, right? You think of the gravity line. If gravity, if the force of the earth comes through us, or the, and, and if, you're, if you're in line with it, everything should just be relaxed. But as soon as something go, oh boy. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Well, I'm just unplugging the... the the screen, so we don't all have to watch it. And just let it do so what it's going to do. Have to worry about it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. Function five. Okay. Uh, no, no signal. That's fine. Okay. Everybody's smiling and doing their thing. No stress. So as as the as gravity comes through you, as soon as you drop one inch in front of the gravity line, guess what gravity has a chance to do? Oh. It starts getting you, right? It starts getting you. And as soon as it starts getting you, what happens? You start having muscle tension that you would not have had if you were straight on line with it, right? That makes sense? Everybody, imagine you have a stick in front of you. Everybody hold your stick. Big stick, right? Now, what if there was a, uh, what if there was a bowling ball on top of that stick? Okay, whoa, okay, there it is. Now you got your weight on. Now, what if you take that bowling ball just one 
It doesn't have to be very far at all. One centimeter forward. You feel all that tension that your body has to hold if your head is laying this far in front of the gravity line or your chest is this far forward in front of the gravity line or any chest is this far forward in front of the gravity line. Right? We are a sedentary society that does that all day long and it's compounded by our lifestyle, correct? So we have to actively pursue the opposite direction or else what's going to happen? Have you, have you ever seen, well, this is the, 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 um, the best example and worst case scenario of this is if you see a, a child who with cerebral palsy or a polio victim, what does that posture look like? Right? Very strongly inward and pathologically inward. Right? Now, go to a, any uh, skilled nursing facility of your choice and observe. What does that look like? Not too different. Right? Curled up. What's different about that? It just happened over 75 years instead of being unfortunate at birth. Okay? What's cool is in, over in Eastern Europe in Prague, Vladimir Yanda in the late 50s, early 60s identified this as crossed posture syndrome. And what's even cooler is you can, if you know what, exactly what muscles are going to get tight with stress, you can directly address those muscles with soft tissue therapy and therapeutic exercise to bring balance back to the body. And whenever you bring balance back to the body, it's that you can bring yourself into peace physiology or into that, uh, as Stephen said, the parasympathetic nervous system can dominate. That parasympathetic nervous system is the healing system. If your body is like this, okay, most people I see as a chiropractor, most people I see who come in have some degree of, of, of a chin poked forward, right? Rarely do I see people coming in with migraines saying, I'm having these horrible migraines, and look at my perfect posture, right? <laughs> Usually they have these horrible migraines. I just, uh, and then when they're sitting, they're sitting kind of like this and telling the story. And you just observe and you go, aha, I can't wait to get you on a foam roll. Anybody been on a foam roll before? Uh, the foam roll. This is actually, if, if there's nothing else you learn tonight from me, I want you guys to find one of these and it will be your best friend and favorite tool. And how do you use it? Uh, if you need to stand, you can look, but I will show you. Here's the, the forwardness draw we're talking about. Okay? All we're going to do is an, once a day, or a couple times a day, you're just going to lay over it. You wouldn't believe how amazing this feels. What am I doing? I'm just paying my tissue debt. I have debt built up. It's like... I've been doing this all day long. I better go the other way or else this is not going to change. This is going to turn into the nursing home shuffle, right? We start pulling ourselves along versus pushing ourselves along. So, nope. I'm just going to turn this off. Yeah. It is off. Forget about it. Just what I needed. I had a, a, a when it came up earlier. I said, I sure hope that thing doesn't work, so I can just, I can just be me. <laughs> Sometimes we are slave to those things, you know. Uh, so, uh, cross posture syndrome I mentioned earlier. This is a way to open up your body to restore that peace physiology to your body. I think it's the missing link in a lot of therapeutic lifestyle programs, uh, cancer therapy programs, all of, all of the 
uh, you know, intensive healing programs is they don't address bringing the posture back into alignment so you can enjoy that central nervous system relaxation. So powerful. Now, uh, you can get them. I, actually, like Dix has them. We get usually get a six six pack bundle of them. And they usually go pretty quick once we get them. But Amazon, you, between twenty and thirty bucks. Get the get the harder ones. Yes, Stephen. Oh yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. All, all we all you all you do and here, you get on it, right? Foam roll. Yeah, foam roller or foam, foam, foam roll. You just lay on it. There you go. Rocket science, right? If we do everything in front of us, why not pay our tissue debt this way? Now, here's the caveat, right? And I'll come back to that in a second. I got another one up here. Yes, because I'm going to demonstrate what crossed posture syndrome is and, what, and where it comes from specifically. Upper crossed. Let's talk about that for a second. What upper crossed is, is, of course, we talked about what happens. We close down, right? Whenever we get stress, we close down. Whenever we have stress, we don't open up. Stress closes us down. So we close down our pectoralis muscles, our pec minor in specific, the one that takes our top of our shoulder and pulls us forward. You see this a lot, the rounded shoulder. And everyone with the rounded shoulder eventually fears the, the, uh, the hump that, the, that happens in the back of the neck, right? And so you get tightness, a cross of tightness in the front and a cross of tightness in the back. The muscles in the, the suboccipital muscles here get tight and the pectoralis muscles get tight. So you have this cross from the back to the front of tightness. See that? Now, if there's a cross of tightness, what does there have to be? A cross of Looseness or weakness, we'll call it weakness, okay? It's not, it's not always because it's weak, but it's, it, you have the tightness, and then the weakness comes from the muscles in the front of the neck, the deep neck flexors, the ones that do what? This. Deep, deep muscles, longus coli, all these ones up front. Okay? All these ones up front. And whenever the deep muscles are, are Whenever the deep muscles are off, switched off, because that's what happens when neurologically, if you're like this and you have all this tension in these other muscles, the opposite muscles just switch off because it's a neurological Sherrington's law of inhibition. It's a physio look it up in a physiological textbook, right? If one's on, the other's got to be off, at least down regulated a little bit. It's not off completely. It's not like it goes offline. But here you are. You got this and this. And now you have this weakness cross here and the weakness of the ones that do this right we have this tightness in the and the other the other tightness that you have is the upper trapezius right these guys right here in my like let's just rub my shoulders right there right? yeah and this is this is the main reason why we get trigger points because we, when, whenever you're sitting in front of a computer or doing anything in front of you for long periods of time you have these sustained kind of sub maximal contractions and that creates trigger points trigger points and muscles have predictable patterns of pain if, I, if someone has a temporal headache, they'll come in and say, well, I, it's just my sinuses, or it's behind my eyes, or it's right here, it's just those, those sinus headaches again. And I go, okay, let's put right there, let's, oh, that's my sinus headache. Okay, so the antibiotics you've been taking for your sinus headache, all we need to do really was, was address that trigger point, maybe do some manual therapy to it, but you don't, the manual therapy speeds it up, right? Doing trigger point therapy, you can, you can rub an elbow in it, you can do active release technique, there's all kinds of manual techniques you can do, but unless and until you correct, you make that, take that action towards correcting the crossed posture, you're, it's going to come back, and guess what? If I'm a chiropractor who's who's, uh, uh, I was, was going to go somewhere where I shouldn't go. Uh, if I don't address and retrain your body systems to keep it that way, then you're coming back and you've got a patient for life, or I have a patient for life. i got a patient every month, or i got a patient every two weeks, and they're dependent upon me for relief. But guess what? That's not how to roll. In my, in the, that's not how I roll, anyway. You have to learn how to correct that. And the basic and most simplest way to do that, okay? I'm going to give you like the simplest equation you've ever heard for correcting your upper cross posture, okay? 
All you're going to do, and actually let's stand up and do it. Okay? All you're going to do is you're going to take the palm of your hand, the base of your thumb, and the base of your, of your little finger, your thenar pad. you got two pads, right? Two pillars of support. And you're going to put them down right, bes right beside you. And you're going to imagine, here's the key word, you're going to imagine that you have a, 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 there's a support, something there is supporting you. It can be, a, imagine it being a, a, you know, two blocks of wood or just a, 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 even a bubble of air, just something that's there. Actually, a bubble of air is probably better because it doesn't need to be a, you know, a strong push. It just be, needs to be the thought. Long pause, because I want you to get that. It's the intention and the thought of pushing away, and it's not actually, you know, using the big muscles to do it. It's the thought of gently pushing away from those support points and going up. How does a rocket go up? It thrusts, it pushes down. How does a baby go from here to here in four years? It keeps pushing away from support points. That's all you have to do. You have to imagine a support point, and nice and gentle, okay, and just push away. And what happens to your shoulder blades? They go down. The tension here can, has a chance to actually let go. Okay? You guys can sit down again. Very, very, very simple. Upper cross. Now, that's how, that's, remember that moment to moment thing that Dr. Johnson was talking about? That's the most important thing, guys, is it has to be moment to moment awareness. If you, it's, it doesn't, it'll help a little bit if you do like, I'll do um, uh, three sets of ten three times a day where I just stop and I go like this. How about every time you feel yourself walking down the street, you think, huh, I can just probably just imagine that right now. All you have to do is imagine it. All you have to do is imagine it. Okay? Because that's how your brain rewires. It rewires through imagination. You talked about the right side of the brain earlier. The right side of the brain is how the brain rewires. If you can imagine it and see it, you guys have heard that before. If you can see it, you can believe it, you can make it happen, right? That's how your brain works. It goes through the right side. So the more you can see something happening in your brain, even if you don't have the consciousness of how to do it actively, you don't have the muscle coordination and memory of how to do it, you can just imagine it happening. And your nervous system will start percolating. That's one of the most powerful things you can do if you're, in, you know, you're laid up in bed and you've got this, uh, an injury or something. You just imagine yourself pushing, pushing away and your nervous system will respond. Proven, proven fact. That's the same thing as uh, the, brain that we, the brain that rewires itself. It talks about um, Norman Doidge, talking about neuroplasticity. The, the, there's two, two groups of people. One learns, one learns how to play the piano by physically playing the piano. The other group is only allowed to imagine playing the piano. Same benefits when they sit down. I think that actually the, 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 the thought, the imagining group actually got to actually practice for like five minutes before they did the test. But they performed almost identically. Imagination, thoughts, intention is everything. Lower cross. Okay, but the upper cross, by the way, you have to open up the chest, right? You have to open up the chest. I, like I said, I do a lot of soft tissue work. I do uh, pectoralis minor releases, and then I send them home with a foam roll. Yes. Oh, you're <laughs> stretching. That's good. That was good. That's how you do it. Uh, so you have to open up the chest as well and then keep that moment-to-moment -moment awareness of that nice, easy push away. All right? Lower cross. Lower cross syndrome is, I can say unequivocally, without a doubt, the number one reason for mechanical low back pain in the world. What is it? Okay? What is it? Uh, again, stress does what? Pulls us forward and inward, folds us in. Think, think the pathological cerebral palsy or, 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 the, or the nursing home shuffle, right? Forward, 
Short hip flexors, short psoas muscles. What are we all doing right now? Sitting and our hip flexors are shortened from sitting all day long, most of us. Most of us. As a society, we have pathological short hip flexors. Long drives. What do you do after a long drive? You get out at a rest stop after three hours on the road, and your first few steps look like what? You know? And you're not... How are you getting... From, how do you walk that 10 feet until you can finally start to straighten up? You walk, and your back is just on. Your back is doing all the work. And just think of the people who never get to get through their hips. The back does the work all the time. Here's the bowling ball. You might as well just hold it all day long. And your back is just going to scream. Okay? Until you open up the front of the hip and you get length in the front of the hip, your back never has a chance. You can, I can, you can come to my office, I'll turn you on your right side and go bam! I'll turn you on your left side and go bam! And adjust that and you'll walk out and go, man, you're the, you're the man, you know? You know, you know, that's what you get. At. And then the doctor gets all the credit. Oh, he's the best chiropractor ever. He, he, turns, he cracks me and then he cracks me the other way. But I've got to go back next month or I've got to go back next week because the problem was never addressed. The core problem, get to your core. Dot com. <laughs> it's our website. Uh, and actually, the website does have a series of self-tests and a whole exercise, free exercise series, kind of the fundamentals of reversing cross-posture syndrome. So that's kind of what our website's all about. Anyway, cross-posture, you got forward here, you're tight in the psoas muscles, you're tight in the hip flexors, tight in the low back. Right? Where are you weak? Abdominals, right? Transverse abdominals. The, the muscles that go from your lower ribs down to your pelvis are, are weak because you, you've been forward so long, you've got this kind of open scissors thing happening. Right? You get this open scissors thing. Now, this isn't everybody with low back pain. I'm not going to say this is the slam dunk every time. But this open scissors that we get causes our back to get overloaded and our ab abdominals just go out the window. Okay? So our abdominals get weak and usually our glutes and our really deep hip flex or the really deep muscles of our hip get weak. And we cannot bring our pelvis underneath us anymore. We run, we run around with this little bit of a dump. Like we're always spilling the water out of our pelvis. That's a good thing to think about when you're walking is, am I, if you ever walk by the mirror and say, is the water spilling? Yeah, let's just bring it just a little bit. And here's the caveat. It's not all about, uh, you know, doing the, the glute squeeze thing. You'll hear people train that. And I know it looks funny, doesn't it? Walk around like this. Hey. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve Urkel. Hey. <laughs> I ain't hear that. Uh, this, is, uh, this is how I used to teach it. This is how it used to be taught. But what has come out of uh, the, the whole neurodevelopmental model and the Eastern European thing and all that kind of stuff is that it's not about the big, deep, it's not about the big strong outer muscles that do the job. It's about the, the little bitty muscles on the inside. It's the muscles like the deep transverse abdominis. You know, it's like, the, it's like the deep hip muscles that allow your pelvis to kind of slide underneath you without having to use your glutes. Let's see if we can do that, shall we? Everybody stand up. All I want you to do is feel what, you kind of check in with kind of how you, what your posture feels like, and I want you to over-exaggerate over the forward tilt. Okay, and all I want you to do is try to bring it back underneath you without squeezing el gluteus maximus, right? Without squeezing the glutes, try to bring your pelvis underneath you. Here's a trick. Imagine that there was a support point in front of you. Imagine if you were laying on your belly and if you were on the floor like this, what if you just tried to connect your pubic bone to the floor? What if you just tried to push away from your pubic bone? Like a guess what does at about three and a half, four months old. Like a baby. Like you did when you were a baby. It's, this is deep wired into the system. When you bring on these intentional things where you can connect and wake up that system, your nervous system goes, oh, I, I remember this. I remember this. We did this. I did this when I was like four months old. This is how I developed my posture. This is how I got upright to begin with. 
If you can bring those pieces of your intention back to that, you can reawaken those pathways of youth. Literally. You can awaken those pathways of youth. And that goes for, that goes for everything, right? So uh, you can have a seat again. That goes for, that goes for thinking about your, uh, if you were, if, I know that one of the positions we use uh, in, the, uh, in the office and in the course, in the online course, is we have people get on their elbow and they push away from their elbow. Okay? What am I doing? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to learn how to creep and crawl because my support point is the inside of my elbow when I creep and crawl. That is a major place with a lot of potential for sensory integration. So if you just imagine taking your elbow, everybody, you can just do it while you're sitting right there. Imagine your, that support being connected to something and push away from it. Watch what happens here. I got the, got the shadow effect going. Push away here. What's going on with my sh- this shoulder right here? Watch. Ah, you mean all we have to do is push away from support points? Now, I went, I'm not going to say it's always that easy, right? Because when you push away from that support point, you also have to have the muscles that, you're, that are connecting from your shoulder up to your head, they have to be long enough to go there. Sometimes you get to a point and you feel, I, I, I feel tense, I feel too tense there, I can't make that happen. Okay, that's where some manual therapy to speed the process along is useful. Okay, but you can get there if you keep giving it that intention over and over and over again. Pretty soon your tissue is going to say, all right, I give up. Let's give in to your demands, <laughs> essentially, right? So uh, the other thing, and so... What is, the, what is the most common cure to mechanical low back pain? The most common cure to mechanical low back pain, all I usually do is I give people a simple split squat or a lunge exercise. I'll demonstrate it, then you guys can all do it. And there's, when you think of lunge, you, what, what does everybody think about whenever you think of lunge? You think, well, I'm going to work on my glutes and quads for, for, for training, right? You think, oh, you know, this kind of thing, right? That is, that is a lunge, and you are lunging forward. We call it the push-away lunge, and actually we should, should probably have named it the, a split squat because it's more of what it is. Uh, what we do is we get nice and long. First of all, can you, can you even do that? And can you hold your balance while you're doing that? I'm amazed when I put people into, okay, let's get ready to try this split squat, and they get back here and they're like, Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, aha, there's more than one thing going on here, right? We got balance issues too, but we get, but it's, that's that learning that skill, right? Learning a new skill or reawakening an old skill that you haven't used for a long time wakes up your brain, puts it in learning mode, gets the, gets your brain derived neurotrophic factors going, your BDNF, and that's the stuff that keeps you young in your brain and prevents you from getting Alzheimer's. When you learn something new, whether it's learning a new language or learning a new movement, you're learning something new and you switch on the neuroplasticity in your brain and all of a sudden you start learning other things easier. That's what's really cool about it. And that's why it's so powerful for kids to make sure that they're integrating these basic movements into their life because we get, as soon as we get to four years old, they start getting into TV and video games and then they lose all of that possibility for integration that they would have had playing on the playground or whatnot. Okay, switch back in to the zone here. Here you are, lower cross. All we're doing is, remember, all we, our goal is to get space in the front of the hip and all we're going to do, find the position first and then we drop straight down the gravity line. Okay, it's not a translation maneuver. It is a straight drop. Your knees will talk to you if you've got a knee thing going on, and that's a whole other deal, right? Exercises are diagnostic. If you can do, all of a sudden you do this exercise, well, I can't do that because this hurts. Okay, let's peel back and look at that, because until you get that done, until you can do this, we can't go to the next thing. So let's all try that now. And 
And for, so you can uh, find a little space if you, uh, if you need to. You're free, you're free to roam about the cabin. All right? So first thing is, everybody's just going to get comfortable in a nice, about as wide as you can comfortably get. Okay? And use a chair next to you if you don't feel, I mean, seriously, use a chair for a, a, a finger support if you have to. And all of the, all of the bending is going to come out of the back. The back knee is where all the action is, guys. The back knee. It's almost like you are lunging down into the back leg. Both legs are going to bend. Straight up and down. Yes, you're on the ball of your foot in the back, and your front foot is flat. And you're just going to drop straight down, and you're going to feel a stretch. Where you want to feel the stretch is in the front of the hip, and you may feel it down in your thigh a little bit. But stretching out the front side of that hip is going to take that psoas muscle and release it and relax it. And that psoas muscle that, that crosses your hip goes up and attaches to every single one of your lumbar spine vertebrae. Okay? It's a straight down. It's a straight down. And make sure that you're, you're on the ball of your back foot. It's not, if, if your foot is turned out, then you're not going to get the same effect. On the ball. Straight down. Okay, does anyone feel a stretch in the back side, the back side hip? Who is not feeling it? Not feeling it? I mean, let's demonstrate. Let's all just correct. What's your name? Debbie. Debbie I'm going to help Debbie correct, and she'll help everybody else learn. Come on. Okay, do what you were just doing. Everybody take a look. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to make sure that the front knee is also going down. You're going to see how, fu- how, how, how much you can approximate your back knee to the ground. Okay. You, she, you can use me, absolutely. Your, your front knee will bend. Your front knee has to bend, hon. There you go. Now stay. Feel it now? Okay, so she just wasn't bending her front knee. Either the I know Steve does it close, but he has the ability to drop straight down. But if not, if you step back a little bit and just and just focus on a little bit of a knee dip without going forward. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is your is your spine. Thank you. So that was helpful. You you felt it more immediately. Okay. So the other thing with that, guys, is whenever you, whenever you go down, your body, if you have a lot of tension in the hip flexor, your front body is going to want to go like this. Anybody feel that when they went down? Okay. So, again, everything's aligned, dropping straight down. I call it the push-away lunge. It's one of those, it's one of those exercises that's, that's, that's free on the website. If you guys go get to your core.com, it'll be right there. You name an email and you got it all. Okay. <laughs> you got me. Well, that's, that's a, actually a, that's a, a very good point because before you start into that, it's important to bring that thought of, okay, let's connect my pubic bone like a baby before we start. And that's going to put the pelvis in the right place before you go anywhere. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> yes, I've... Actually, probably. They should do a study on that. I should do a study on that. So. Yes, both legs equally, yes. And depi- yes, you can do, uh, you know, and as long as you just get that in your system, if you did a, a set of 10 on each side a couple of times a day and just pay attention to what your back feels like. And again, that's not a slam dunk. I just find it in probably 80% of just regular standard mechanical low back pain people who come in who sit all day. All right? So, Yes. Get to your core. That's not get, G-I-T. Get. Get to your core dot com. No, it's not G-I-T. That's all spelled out. So, (laughs) your core. All right. So, now, now, let's see. Where are we on the scheme of things here? All right, we've got a few minutes. Uh, the other thing I, I want you to really grasp onto as a concept before you go home tonight where you, that will you, carry over into a lot of things is that 
when you're a baby and you're on your back in this position, just imagine me on my back here, right? My legs are up in the air. And the first thing I do before I start rolling over and turning and reaching and grabbing and all that stuff, the first thing I have to do is I have to develop my primary support zone in order to push away from it. If I don't have something to push away from, it's like shooting a canoe out of a cannon, right? That's not very effective. Boom, right? You've got to have a solid base of support before you put any force through it. Can I get nods on that? Makes sense? You get that shoot a canoe out of a cannon thing, there's no support there. You've got to have a strong support point in Prague. They call it the punctum fixum, the p- support point, point of support. And the main first one, when you're four months old, or around four, four and a half months, before you start rolling and turning, you have to connect your back support zone to the ground. Amazing how many people cannot connect their back support zone. Right, Carol? Right. Carol came down from Indianapolis. She's probably furthest traveled today. Actually, she's from Champaign. Oh, Champaign, Illinois. Yeah, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, well, she uh, did, did our online course and, is, and is, has then come to us. Yeah. So anyway, uh, she, the, the connection of the back support zone, uh, if you need to stand up, I'll just do it here real quick. It's easier to actually just show it. I'm on the ground, and I have to... This area right here, my back, not my low back, not my upper back, but right at the base. Everybody find on yourself the, everybody find the bottom of your ribs and the top of your hips, and there's a little gap in the middle, that little no man's land in the middle there, right? Right there, if you wrap your fingers around, you've got your back support zone. That's the most important support zone for you to get when you're moving, walking, sitting, okay? So before I can do this, technical difficulties, before I can do this and roll over for for the very first time, I have to have a base of support from which to push away from. Excuse me for dangling a preposition. All right? I'm pushing away from my back support zone. Until I have that, I can't have any kind of movement that's efficient or effective. If I don't have that and all of my movements don't come from that core, then I'm going to overuse other things and I'm going to develop overuse syndromes. I'm going to develop low back pain. I'm going to, I'm going to have inefficient movement patterns. So that's, that connection is first. And you can see, see how I lift the pelvis a little bit? It's like I am balancing like a teeter-totter right there. I challenge you to do that versus 100 crunches any day. To do that and breathe. Oh, that's that breathing thing. We have got to talk about breathing. Yes. It's perfect. The, uh, woo. Yeah, it's okay. It'll go in the pocket there. Uh, actually, it's a perfect segue because... Everybody's going to scoot their back against their backrest, okay, and really get their, get their, uh, you know, all the way back in the nook. And I want you guys to feel, I want you to connect that part of your back to the backrest, okay? You have to have that support point, support zone, really, back there. Now, what I want you to do is to put your fingers in that no man's land on the side, Okay, and I want you to take a breath in, and when you breathe, I want you to feel your fingers being pushed sideways, and you should also be feeling almost your body lifting away from the chair, like you should be pushing away from the chair because you're sending your breath into your back. You're sending your breath into your back support zone. Now, this may seem like crazy foreign for a lot of you. Because it's a, you know, if you haven't done it and if you have core amnesia, you just, you can't do it until you're, someone coaches you along. But feel that breath against the support zone is how the breath provides stability. It increases pressure. You get that? Whenever you breathe into your center like this, it increases pressure 
in your abdominal cavity. You got the top, your diaphragm is like a dome, like this. Okay? And you've got the pelvic floor from underneath, thank goodness. Some of us do. Right? We need to have the pelvic floor on. That's the kegling, right? Or kegling, however you want to say it. You've got the diaphragm from above. You've got the kegel from below. And when you breathe in, what does your diaphragm do? It goes like this. It goes down and creates pressure. Not only is your diaphragm good for getting oxygen to your tissues, it's crucial and it is the core of the core of the core when it comes to core stability. If you can't do, a, do an exercise and breathe and, and increase pressure in the container with your breath, then you don't have core stability. Most people think it comes from doing crunches and planks and stuff like that. You can do a plank and still be breathing up into your chest until you own a, a 360 degree breath around here you, you don't have a core. You don't have a solid base of support. It's first and most important. Babies that have um, you know, central coordination dysfunctions, uh, cere cerebral palsy and stuff like that, when they breathe, they're, they're up here, so their breath automatically defaults up here. They don't have a good core, so they have a lot of musculoskeletal difficulties. And you don't have to have full-blown cerebral palsy or, or polio or, or, or anything upper motor neuron diseases to have this problem. You just have to have some stress.